Needed the hymn number. It's number 625. It's there in your insert. If you are able and willing, would you stand and let's sing this one out together. backup microphone in your in your pocket welcome to worship today welcome uh, those of you who are right here in lawn chairs to those of you who are in cars and everyone who is joining us at home it is a beautiful and blessed day for us to be together worshiping God and we are um, we are ready for praising God and marching our feet out we might have to redo that one because I the folks here in our uh, right here, I didn't see their feet uh, marching, so we might be redoing that one at the end just to make sure you're up and at them. Um, today we have a special guest preacher. This it. 
This is Pastor Justin Grimm. He is the assistant to the uh, bishop for Evangel and director of evangelical mission for our St. Paul Area Synod, to, of which we are part of. And uh, we welcome him. He'll be preaching and presiding over communion today while Pastor Karsten is down at the Dulos Discovery School in the Dominican Republic. So that is where he is. He's not out hiding on vacation, just in case you were worried. I'm going to invite you to pull out your bulletin now and have a moment of quiet as we prepare our hearts for worship. God created all things. We celebrate all that God created when we gather. God continues to keep God's promises. Ready to put our trust in God. We confess our sins before God and one another. Take a moment to open your heart up and give those things over to God. Creator of all things, we have failed to care for all that you have made. We have squandered resources and oppressed others. Forgive us for what we have done and have failed to do. Teach us how to be stewards of your creation with care and nurture. Amen. Our God will always love all that God made. That's you and that's me and that is our neighbors and everyone and everything around the world. And although we sin, God forgives. Receive now the entire forgiveness of all your sins, granted as a gift from a loving God. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. You kept your promise to Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob 
when you returned to deliver the Israelites. Your faithfulness saved your people. Teach us to trust in your faithfulness. Amen. All right, I'm going to have you big kids sit down, and I'm going to invite those shorter kids, the younger kids with less years, to come on up here. And I want you to self-select, because maybe there's some people that are a few years older, but not, you know, whatever. All right, y'all, come on up here. I know there's a couple more in the back. Collison, come on up here. I haven't seen you for a long time. And Joseph, Joseph, I see you back there. Come on up. I want you to come all the way up here and stand up here with me. Can you come and stand up, up here on the uh, stage with me? All right, everybody crowd around up here. We've got our, you guys have your masks on, so we're, we're good, okay? All right, so, okay, have you, any of you guys ever given a speech in front of people? No, no? Is it scary to get up in front of people? No, it's not scary. Is it scary, to, is, it, is it okay to be right here? This feels okay being right here. What if I put the microphone in front of your mouth and told you to say something? Whoa, don't fall off the back of the stage. What if there was only like one or two people out there that you were talking to, would that be okay? Yeah. Oh, you'd talk to one or two people. Would you talk to 50 people? No, no, not 50 people. What about 500 people? No, that's scary too. So, so the fact that there's there's about fifty people out there. So that's I'm here, and that's that's okay. But if there were five thousand people or five million people, that'd be a lot of people, wouldn't it? Would that be pretty scary to to have to talk in front of people? It would. It would. Yeah, you guys are kind of you. You're just comfortable enough to stand here and not have to talk. But I need one of you to volunteer. Oh, the stage suddenly uh, is is feeling small, and nobody wants to nobody wants to be the one that's going to talk. I need you to I need you to preach today. Justin Justin forgot his sermon at home, and he needs one of you to preach. Can Can you do that? <laughs> well, you know what? Our story today is about sharing the good news. That's what our story is about every week, isn't it? God gives us this really important message, and God wants us to share that good news in front of a whole bunch of people. And that's really an important thing for us to do. And sometimes it's scary when it's a whole bunch of people. It feels more safe when it's just one or two. But God makes people brave and gives us an important message to share. Do any of you know who Greta Thunberg is? Have you ever heard that name? Greta is a kid who had a really important message about global warming. And she shared that in front of people in the, help me out people, the United Nations? Yes. And she shared that message with everybody because she said it's so important that everybody needs to know. And that's kind of like what our Bible story is today. It's a message that everybody needs to know. And so I want you guys to think about the good news that we hear in the Bible and the good news that we learn at church and how we might be brave enough to talk to one or two people about how important that story is. And someday maybe we'll feel brave enough to share that story with 10 or 50 or 100 people. That'd be pretty good, wouldn't it? Because then everybody else would know about God's amazing love. All right, will you guys pray with me? Dear God, thank you so much for your good news. Thank you for speaking to us. Thank you for hearing us. Thank you for loving us. Help us to share your good news with others. Amen. All right, you guys go on and sit down.
and see if you hear any special messages during the sermon today. Oh, we're going to do Reader's Theater now. And you have the actual Bible lesson printed. So um, I'm going to invite the Reader's Theater folks up here to, you're going to have to share a microphone, okay? I hope you can make that work. You guys stand over in front of the piano. It's there, right there. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. How's the lay that to work? I'm going to have Good morning. After a long time, the king of Egypt died. The Israelites groaned under their slavery and cried out. Out of the slavery, their cry for help rose up to God. God heard their groaning, and God remembered his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God looked upon the Israelites, and God took notice of them. Moses was keeping flock of his father-in-law Jethro, keeping the flock of his father-in-law Jethro, the priest of Midian. He led his flock beyond the wilderness and came to Horeb, the mountain of God, where the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of a bush. He looked, and the bush was blazing, yet it was not consumed. Then Moses said, I must turn aside and look at this great sight and see why the bush is not burned up. When the Lord saw that he had turned aside to see, God called out to, to him out of the bush, Moses, Moses, and he said, Here I am. Then he said, Come no closer, remove the sandals from your feet, for the place on which you are standing is holy ground. He said further, I am the God of your father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look at God. Then the Lord said, I have, I have observed the misery of my people who are in Egypt. I have heard their cry on account of their taskmaster. Indeed, I know their suffering, and I have come down to deliver them from the Egyptians and to bring them up out of the land to a good and broad land, a land flowing with milk and honey, to the, excuse me, to the country of the Got to hold it at the bottom. The Canaanites, the Hittites, the Amorites, the Pezzarites, the Hivites, the Jebusites. I cry of the Israelites has now come to me. I have also seen how the Egyptians oppress them. So come, I will send you to Pharaoh to bring my people, the Israelites, out of Egypt. But Moses said to God, who am I that I should go to Pharaoh and bring the Israelites out of Egypt? He said, I will be with you, and this shall be the sign for you that it is I who sent you. When you have brought the people out of Egypt, you shall worship God on this mountain. But Moses said to God, if I come to the Israelites and say to them, the God of your ancestors has sent me to you, and they ask me, what is his name? What shall I say to them? God said to Moses, I am who I am. He said further, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, I am has sent me to you. God also said to Moses, Thus you shall say to the Israelites, the Lord, the God of your ancestors, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob has sent me to you. This is my name forever, and this my title for all generations. But Moses said to the Lord, O oh my Lord, I have never been eloquent, neither in the past nor even now you have spoken to your servant, but I am slow of speech and slow of tongue. Then the Lord said to him, Which one am I? <laughs> Sorry. 
God gives me speech to mortals who make them mute or deaf, seeing or blind. Is it not I, the Lord? Now go, and I will be with, I will be with your mouth and teach you what you are to speak. But he said, O oh my Lord, please send someone else. Then the anger of the Lord was kindled against Moses, and he said, What of your brother Aaron the Levite? I know that he can speak fluently. Even now he is coming out to meet you. And when he sees you, his heart will be glad. You shall speak to him and put the words in his mouth. And I will be with your mouth and with his mouth and will teach you what you shall do. He indeed shall speak for you to all people. He shall serve as a mouth for you and you shall serve as God for him. Take in your hands this staff with which you shall perform the signs. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Can it reach? Yeah. You sure? Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. How y'all doing? Good. 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 Can you hear me? Yep. Yep. Yeah? I think I'll put it out. All right. Well, good morning. I am Justin Grimm. I serve, as, as Jennifer said, as the Director for Evangelical Mission and one of the assistants to Bishop Patricia Lull. Uh, and I bring you greetings today on behalf of the other 108 congregations and mission starts that make up the St. Paul Area Synod. We're about 120 thousand baptized members uh, in the East Metro and, and together we are church and I've come to learn that in the about six and a half years that I've done this work as I get to be out and work with congregations it's it we are so much better together Pastor Karsten asked that I share a few words of introductory remarks about what I do in the Synod before we get into the sermon so we're going to do that but I also want to point out in the bulletin that he challenged you to give me encouraging words afterwards and a warm welcome. So I'm holding you to it, all right? Because he put it right in the bulletin. So I'm waiting for those encouraging words. It can happen during the sermon or after the sermon or on my way out. But just make sure I want some encouragement, okay? Deal? All right, good. Hey, good start. Good start. Um, so a couple of things he wanted me to highlight on is the things that we've been working on together as Synod and our Redeemer. One of those areas is the year of renewal process. Raise your hand if you've been on the renewal team here at our Redeemer. Raise it. Be proud. It's good. Look around. Those folks have been part of an intentional effort uh, now over a year during the pandemic. It was a little different than normal, but that was our fourth time as a Synod of doing some intentional work around mission vitality and renewal, asking the question of who we are at this time, who are we called to be as the church uh, at this time, not 20 years from now, but today, and thinking about who our neighbor is and what it means to respond faithfully to God's grace. So special thanks. Raise your hand again, Renewal team. Special thanks to these folks that put in a lot of time and energy. Can we give them a round of applause? <laughs> encouraging words, encouraging claps. Great. Another thing uh, Carson wanted me to talk about was what, what I do in the regards of new missions. So we have nine new start congregations or redevelopments. So congregations that are brand new. Some of them aren't so brand new anywhere, anymore. They've been around like 12 years, but they're still considered a mission start. They're not self-sustainable. So they are alive and doing the work that God has called them to do thanks to the generous support of, men, of the congregations in our synod, like you, through your normal mission support, but also through some special giving through our campaign we do each year to raise $100,000. Though Many of those ministries are ethnic specific. We have a Hmong congregation, we have a Chinese congregation, we have a Latino congregation, an African national Anahuac congregation, uh, as well as some others, just to highlight those. And, and I work with them really closely, and I want to say on behalf of them and from my heart thank you for your faithful support when you give a little bit of offering to this congregation part of that comes to the synod and then part of that is shared with the wider church that wouldn't be possible without your your faithful giving so thank you thank you thank you two more little things uh, east side we're on the east side of st paul here and for the last i don't know maybe somebody can help me out on that renewal team 
year plus, we've started to have some conversations. Actually, for the last many years, we've had conversations about what it means to be church together on the east side. Jennifer did some stuff with young adult work. But intentionally, the last year, four congregations, Our Redeemer, Grace, Hope, Arlington Hills have been having conversations about what it means to be together in ministry today, realizing that the future of the church is, is different than what it was 30 years ago. Those congregation conversations continue to happen, and we're not sure where it will go, but it's been a very fruitful, fruitful time. Finally, we are embarking on a capital campaign in the Synod called Planting Hope. In fact, Jennifer just gave me a check uh, as an initial gift. I don't know if it was from you or Carson or somebody else wrote it, but whoever wrote it, maybe it's on the church, uh, an initial gift to the Planting Hope campaign. Planting Hope is a $2.6-ish million dollar campaign. The Synod's hoping to raise money, specifically around some areas. One of those is about a million dollar project on the east side of St. Paul. So that will directly impact the neighbors here. We are working closely with institutions, and, and very soon the bishop will announce what that project's going to be. But I know that it's getting close, and it's very close with an institutional partner that will help us magnify that work on the east side of St. Paul. In addition to that, $500,000 will be raised over the next three years to support local mission. So the mission congregations I work with, but also the year of renewal, stewardship for all season, generous uh, stewards, uh, building a culture of generosity, which your congregation takes part in. Those things cost money. We like to keep that cost down for congregations. So we're going to raise a bunch of money so we can continue to do that work together. So that's, that's all coming, as well as money for young adults, money for some ethnic and uh, multicultural ministry, and then money to, to create um, some funds so that we can support next, the next generation of leaders. So those are all things that are going on. I could talk for hours. I won't, because then your encouraging words would be kind of other words. So with that, I think we should pray. Let's pray. Holy God, holy, holy, holy God, the great I am, we come before you realizing we too, like Moses, we're on holy ground this morning as we gather for worship, as we sing praises to you, almighty God, as we hear words of scripture, as we pray together, as we approach the throne of grace and celebrate communion, Lord, we are on holy ground. Help us. Help us remember that, Lord. Help us remember that you are here in this place and you go with us beyond this place. God, quiet our hearts. Quiet our minds. Help us to focus on you and the word you would have us here this morning, Lord. Speak to us. Be clear. Give us hope. When we're hopeless, give us courage. When we're afraid, give us boldness in our witness and our testimony to who you are, God, so that we may proclaim your name in all the world and people may see the love of Jesus Christ through us. We pray this in your holy and precious name and let the church together say amen. 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 All right. It's always weird having somebody stand behind me, Amy. I'm feeling you're making faces at me. <laughs> this is really fun. Amy and I are kind of related, right? We're, we're, uh, we're married to cousins, which is really great. And what a gift we have in Amy and her leadership this morning. Can we thank her for that? I've heard you sing many times, and it's always a treat. So thank you. Dear siblings in Christ, grace to you and peace from God, the Creator, and our risen Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ, who calls you to go and to proclaim His name. Amen. It's okay to say amen. amen. I want to start this morning with a few questions for you to consider. If you're in the cars, you can still participate. I'll try to see if you raise your hands or not. So it's really easy. I'm going to ask you a question. I'm going to ask you to raise your hand if the answer is yes. So raise your hand if you've ever been called by God. It's kind of a trick question. It's an easy one. Everybody should be raising their hand, yeah? We've all been called by God in the waters of baptism by the gift of Jesus, His grace for us. We are called to be God's children. We are called by name to proclaim God's world. So let me ask you again. Raise your hand if you've ever been called by God. All right. Raise your hand if you've ever struggled to respond to God's call for you. Amen. You know, called to love somebody that's a little bit unlovable. Called to forgive somebody that's hurt you. 
called to go and do something new in your life, sometimes that's a challenge. Called to be a leader in the church. All right, raise your hand if you've ever tried to make excuses to God about why you can't respond to the call given to you. Somebody had their hand up even before I finished the question. Let's go. All right, raise your hand if you've ever felt not good enough. Not smart enough. They can't do something. All right, one more. Raise your hand if you've ever experienced the eternal promise of God's presence with you forever and ever. If you've ever felt the love of God, raise your hand. This is the closest we'll get to an altar call, I promise. If you've ever felt God's promise for you in your life and it's picked you up from a pit of despair or a period of darkness, raise your hand. Have you ever told anybody about it? Oh, the hands go down. We call that Lutheran laryngitis. All right, thanks for playing that game. So the reason I wanted to start with those questions is to get you thinking about the relationship between God and God's people. It's a complicated relationship throughout all of history. From the time of the Old Testament stories, Moses today we hear about, throughout all of the Bible and the story up until today, the relationship between God and God's people is a rich relationship that is quite complicated. God declares something, calls people, God's people revolt, make excuses, turn against, don't listen, on and on and on. This continues to be the story to today. But God remains faithful, yes? The same God that delivers you today is the God that delivered the Israelites all those years ago. The same God that is here today as we celebrate communion and worship together is the same God that fed the Israelites manna from heaven. The same God that called Moses all those years ago is a God that calls you today. The same God, faithful, forever, promise. You see, God is forever and faithful and always has and always will fulfill God's promises. Amen? Amen. But who cares? I mean, really, what, what does that have to do with you now, today, here? What is that word, that hope that we say, yeah, we agree, amen. What does that have to do with us here at our Redeemer this Sunday morning? We'll get to that, I hope, I promise, maybe. But before we do that, let's dig into the story of Moses that was just beautifully read. Emmy, Emmy Award performance of Reader's Theater here a minute ago. So let's go to Exodus. <laughs> This part of Exodus is one of my favorite stories in the whole Bible. The burning bush appears before Moses. You've heard the story. Moses, not sure what to do because it's so weird, knows that it's something special. So he turns his eyes at least to kind of see what's going on, draws closer to this burning bush because he knows it's something special. He realizes quickly that it's a holy place. It's holy land. God tells him so. He takes off his shoes and he meets the great I am. The great I am who will soon become the great I will. Moses, moved by God's appearance, afraid to look at the divine, listens carefully as God describes where he's coming from. Now you've got to realize the Israelites are struggling. Yeah, Moses is out tending the flock of his father-in-law, but, but the Israelites are struggling and they're wondering, where has God been? Where's God? Does he not care about us? Where's God while we struggle and while we suffer? And Moses, too, is, is, is feeling that. And God seems to know that and admits, yes, I've been, I've been absent. I know the sufferings of the people. I've been away in your view for some time. But now God declares that God will do something. Moses, hearing that God's on the scene, knowing that God is there, is starting to get excited. And he's, he's probably thinking, great, what's, what's the great plan? What are you, you going to do? How are you going to save the people? What will it be? And then God declares the great plan is him. It's Moses. Yes, the one watching the flock will be the one God sends to free the people from Pharaoh. Moses isn't having any of that. 
coming up in this short, short passage of Scripture with at least five different excuses of why he can't be the one to go. I'm not good enough. I don't have all the answers. People won't believe me. This is crazy talk. I'm a terrible speaker. And I'm not qualified. But every time Moses gives an excuse, God meets it with an answer. Not, not only that, not just an answer. God meets it with a promise. Yes, a promise of how God will fill the gaps of Moses' shortcomings. You see that? Every time Moses says, I'm not good enough, God says, well, wait a minute. Let me do this. I can't speak. Here's Aaron. What should I say? Tell him I sent you. God has a plan, church, to fill in when we can't go forward. Now, on top of the give and take between Moses and God, we see ultimately who God is this morning. Yes, the story is about a calling and it's about the way God provides and it's about sending Moses into the, into the, the, the work that God has called him to and we, we get to introduce to Aaron and all of that's really important and really cool. But ultimately what this text is about is God's identity with God's people. And that's what I hope you see. God declares God's self as the great I am. The one that will be faithful forever. The one that promises to never leave her people. The one that always provides a way forward, not being stopped by excuses or human indifferences and fear, but rather being the one that finds a way. This God, this same God, all those years ago delivers the people. Yes, we know the story. And this same God not only delivers the people from Pharaoh, but delivers the world from the bondage of sin and death through Jesus the Christ. And that promise continues to today. Yes, God was faithful. Amen? Amen. God is faithful still today. Amen? Amen? But let me ask you again. So what? I mean, really, what difference does it make in your life? What is the promise of a faithful God who continues to be faithful and continues to call the people and deliver the people have to do with you? With our Redeemer Lutheran Church? With today? I think it starts with going back to those questions I first asked you at the beginning. Remember those? That was a fun game. You see, God isn't done being God just because God delivered the Israelites once and for all, just because God sent Jesus into the world, just because we have the Easter promise and the resurrection. No, God continues to be God this very moment. Yes? Sure. It's easy to think that we sit here. I mean, it's easy to feel that. You promised. Some of you said, yes, I believe that. It's easy to declare our belief in who God is when we gather in this beautiful setting and we have this beautiful music and we read the scriptures and we're in a safe place. It's great to feel, yes, God is God and God is faithful while I'm sitting right here. But what about when we leave? What about when we get in our cars or remain in our cars and we drive away into a world that's hurting? It's a lot more difficult to hang on to the belief that God is God, who God says God is, a God of love, a God of mercy, a God that never leaves us. When we meet people that are lonely and afraid, when we ourselves are lonely and afraid, when division in our world is, is at an all-time high, where hatred is the norm if somebody doesn't agree with us, when God seems distant or not even caring, when people are spinning out of control, when people are feeling more and more desolate and afraid, where is God then? What do we say at that church? How do we respond to that church? Who will be the voice of God then, church? Where is God, we wonder? Like the Israelites were wondering until God moved and called Moses. Where's God? How's God? How do we proclaim God? Who will proclaim God? Now, I'm looking for a burning bush. And I don't see one. But what I do see 
And what I do believe is that God is calling each one of you at this moment. Dear friends, God is counting on you. God is counting on you. Let me say that again. God is calling you right now to be the voice, the love, the face, the hands of God in this world. Yes, God calls you, church, to rise up and to bring God's presence to life through your very being. Hatred? It's you that God calls to speak grace and love and mercy to isolation and loneliness it's you church that God calls to go and visit those that are afraid and desolate and oppressed it's you that God sends to bring hope to the hopeless and so on and so on friends in the midst of a world that is so out of control God calls you to settle it down how how do we do that well, it starts by claiming the promise of Almighty God first that you know for yourself. It starts by rooting yourself in the foundation that no matter what you have done and no matter what you will do, God will love you forever and ever. Amen? Do you believe that? Now, here's the deal. I don't just want to ask that and, and you feel you have to say, yes, I know how crowds work. If you don't believe that... If you're struggling to hold on to the belief that God is the great I am for you this day, my prayer is that this church will find you and will lift you up. Because that's what it means to be the body of Christ. But if you do believe it, if you're holding on to the promise that God loves you forever and ever, no matter what, and you will never be separated from that love of God, then you got work to do, church, because that gift of God's love, that gift of God's grace is a calling for you to share it in the world. God calls you to go. Can you do it? Spoiler alert, you can on your own. There's just no way. But like Moses, God promises you that God will be your voice. God will be your heart. God will speak through you. God will use you as God's instrument. It's a little late for the flyover. God will speak through you, church. We root ourselves in the promise of Almighty God and then we go into the world because God sends us there doing the work God has given you. Hear the call of God. I send you, God says. You are called to go. Will you go? Now, before you say yes, think about all the excuses of why you can't. Think about all the reasons you're making in your mind and in your heart about why you can't go share the love of God with that person you know needs it or you think needs it. Think of all the excuses about why you can't go and visit the lonely person that you've been thinking about for the last six months because you're too busy, you're too tired, your work is too much, you got too much going on. Those are just my excuses, friends. You probably got your own. Think about why you don't respond because it's easier to worry about myself. Because i got too much going on. Again, that's my list of excuses. I want you to think of all the excuses you have about why you can't respond to God's call. Just like Moses had excuses. What are the excuses you have? Think about them. Keep them in your head. Keep them in your heart. And then when you come forward to receive communion or when Jennifer brings you communion, if you're, if you're sitting in the parking lot... When that happens, I want you to put your hands out to receive the bread and the wine. But as you're putting your hands out, imagine that you're giving those very excuses to God. Because you see, God will take them. And God will replace them with this. The body. The blood of Jesus Christ. So let go of that list and give it to God and be filled with the promise of the Holy, Holy Lord who says, I love you so much that I gave my son to die for you. Be filled with that promise and go and tell the world who God is. Church, we got work to do. 
But again and again and again, God shows us the way. So let's rise up. The world is waiting. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Justin, for reminding us of our call and who it is that calls us, who leads us day by day. Find in your bulletin, insert our song, Jesus, Still Lead On. If you're willing, would you rise and sing? Pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Dear Lord, we're not always willing when you call. We make excuses, we downplay our gifts, we deflect and dodge our responsibility you've placed in us. Sometimes we're just plain scared. Help us past our doubts, our misgivings, and our lack of trust in your promises. And forgive us for forgetting. Lead us boldly forth for the sake of your gospel. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. We are probably as stuck now as we've ever been. Uh, not by shackles or by bars, but by our short-sightedness, our greed, our disregard for vulnerable people and the powerless, 
bring us to repentance and reconciliation with each other and all of your creation. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. As seasons change and as uncertainty visits us daily, plant within us an assurance of your steadfast promise, which has never forgotten us nor left us to flounder on our own. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. Oh God, you are, oh that was good, you are who you are forever. And one word from you can bring about the healing of us all. Visit us with your transformative spirit and surround us with your presence, those whom we lift up before you especially. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. We stand on the long line of servants, followed without knowing exactly where you would lead them, but trusted nonetheless. Make us worthy to share their company and bring us all at the length of your eternal kingdom. Faithful Lord, hear our prayer. Here are other petitions, maybe offers. Offered. Steadfast and loving God, gather these prayers we have offered, both aloud and silent, into your loving arms, for we know that you are faithful and will never abandon us. Through Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We're going to transition into our holy meal here momentarily. As we gather here in this place of worship this day in 2021, we remember and we celebrate the, the way that Jesus spent his last night with his disciples. As they were gathered, he took bread, he gave thanks, he broke it, and he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat all of you. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after they'd finished supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant, the new promise in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. As often as we eat this bread and we drink this cup, claim the Lord's death until he comes. And gathering around that promise, that promise of God's love for you, the people of God, let us celebrate the work of God by declaring our faith by using the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from a time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. These are the gifts of God for you, the children of God. Come, for all has been prepared. You may be seated.
I invite you to receive this blessing. You can stand if you want. You can sit if you want. The body and blood of our risen Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and always keep you in His grace. Amen. Amen. Jennifer. I just have one announcement. No, I have two announcements. Um, the first announcement is next Sunday after worship, we're going to have a special guest, um, Ben, um, I forgot his last name. Yeah, Ben is coming from the Eastside Freedom Library to talk to us about uh, the um, about homelessness and eviction and the uh, um, rent cap and things like that that are going on right now in St. Paul. That's coming up for a vote in November. And so he's going to talk to us about that and what that means for our community. So please uh, plan next Sunday to stay after worship for that. Um, if you're able to help clean up after worship, we would certainly appreciate it. We got to get everything in here, and uh, hopefully the sprinkles or rain won't uh, won't catch us. So uh, put your chairs on the chair rack and uh, come and have a donut and fill out Hillary's scroll that she's working on. That's our continuum of our Bible story. Receive the benediction. May the God, our great I am, bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with his eternal favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace and serve the Lord. Thank you, God.